Nathan McKinnon is dominating the NHL right now, and it's not just on paper. This season, he's emerged as the NHL's most exciting player to watch, assembling a rap sheet of highlight real plays, many of them starting in his own zone. So how is my personal MVP pick leapfrog McDavid in terms of producing rush chances? It may not be what you think. In today's video, we're going to break down the evolution of Mac's defensive strategy, which has transformed him into a threat from any zone on the ice. Stick around, this is going to be a fun one. Ever since McKinnon broke into the league in 2013, he's been known for his speed. In his rookie year, he weaved through the wild for this beauty. Five years later, he used his speed and timing to find space between the Calgary D before beating Smith high glove. And then who could forget, in the Av Stanley Cup run, he had this end-to-end -end classic against St. Louis. You'll notice all of these plays started deep in the Av zone and ended with him celebrating by himself without a teammate in sight. When the light shined the brightest, Nate seemed to have another gear. But this year seems different. He has, well, another gear, and he seems to have it all the time. General media outlets will tell you it's his dedication to health and fitness off the ice, and there's no doubt that this is part of it. Zadorov has mentioned his crazy eating healthy habits, and even more recently, Colton went into depth on Nate's intense training regimen. According to Mac himself, he does zone two rides after abs games. Nathan claimed this is very common around the NHL, but I have a feeling he's taking it to a new level as I've noticed his endurance this year is off the charts. In McKinnon's statement hat-trick game against Mini earlier this week, his first goal was scored 57 seconds into his shift. In a situation where most players would be gasping for air, Nate Dog was hitting top speed, forcing Bogosian to pretend this was a 2-on-1 just to try to keep his dignity. Speaking of 2-on-1s, this one last week, again against the Wild, was after 30 seconds of defending, and yet it still looked like McKinnon was shot out of a cannon. And the same thing for this play. No, he doesn't score, but this was after a D-zone draw and 30 seconds of being hemmed in his own zone. You simply can't do these types of things if you aren't physically at your peak, and it's obvious that McKinnon is. With that said, there's a second component to this that I don't think anyone's talking about. McKinnon's style of play without the puck is very different from almost all centers in the league, especially in the D zone. And the interesting thing is, he has complete buy-in from Bednar and his teammates. While Mac takes face-offs and is listed as a center, he many times opts out of the center's D zone responsibilities. Take Calgary's OT goal for instance. Landy was taking the center's D zone coverage down low, and while the Flames could have easily scored, it allowed Nate to be free, gain momentum, and strike on the other end. Even when he's playing wing in the D zone, he looks to be opportunistic. Watch him try to time this exit before letting his man Lindell get a prime scoring chance. But the Avs and Mac have no fears in trading a Lindell chance for a Mac chance straight up. On this play, he was assuming normal center responsibilities, and Matthews outsmarts him to get open out front. But a geo poke allows Mac to bulldoze his way through the Leafs before eventually stopping on a dime which is super taxing on the legs and scoring low glove. When the Avs went on to play the Leafs for the second time this season, he also bails out on blocking a shot, but then is able to gallop his way through the neutral zone before setting up Cox. He's essentially charging up in the D zone and leveraging what we call opportunistic defending. The Avs have possibly the best defensive core in the league, and so they rely on guys like Taves, Manson, Gerard, and Makar in this instance to do a lot of the heavy work on the defensive side and produce the turnovers. Mac just needs to play some loose defense and keep his head on a swivel so he's ready to pounce whenever there's a turnover. Now it's not like Mac isn't playing defense at all, he's just being strategic and letting his linemates play to their strengths while he plays to his. He's simply not able to make half of these plays if he pours all of his efforts into the defensive side of the puck. As the old saying goes, if you try to do everything, you'll accomplish nothing. Some say this won't work in the playoffs, but it most certainly did against Edmonton two years back, and with the Avs decor even better this year, I'd expect to see more of the same. Comment if you think Mac deserves the MVP, and if you think he's found the perfect balance of not being a liability on the defensive side of the puck, or reserving energy for offense. As for the other MVP frontrunner in Kucherov, we'll be profiling him next, so make sure you like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out.